Hello and welcome to Call to the News, the Watch It Played news show, the home of the place where I tell you about the news on Watch It Played in this news show on the internet. And we're off to a roaring start. First up is Clax, and other than the sound a horse makes, it's a Discworld board game based on Terry Pratchett's novel, Going Postal. Clax, though I would have called it Clippity Clop the board game, is based around the book's fastest non-magical messaging system of sending semaphore messages through a series of shuttered lamps on top of high towers. And now the postal service is fighting against this new technology by challenging the Clax system to a race to deliver the post the fastest. Which I was hoping would sound more dramatic. A race to deliver the post the fastest, fastest, fastest. It's a pretty obscure game in many ways that many lovers of the Discworld novels have long wanted to add to their collections but have been unable to because it's more out of print than What Does The Facts Say? The newsletter for the facts enthusiast community which is faxed out once a week to no one. And while the more recent Kodinka was based on the Clax game, we now have, coming from Backspindle Games, a big collector version of Clax coming at some point. Fresh with minis and new art, and hopefully this means that people who wanted it will be able to get it, as well as everyone else for that matter. But who will get it the fastest? There's only one way to find out. A race around the world. I can't be bothered with that at all. I'll just wait for the post. And if Clax has taught us anything, it's that people are pretty big fans of pulling things in envelopes, whether that be letters in the postal service or cards enveloped in card sleeves. Card sleeves such as those from this episode's sponsor, Upper Decks Marvel Gaming Accessories, which recently released a new line of gaming accessories featuring fan favourite Marvel superheroes and villains. This new collection of limited edition accessories can be used with any game, including the legendary deck building game and versus system two player card game. Bitten by a radioactive card sleeve, Peter Parker was transformed into this sensational Spider-Man playmat. And not to be outdone, this playmat, it was snapped into existence following a particularly powerful slam poetry recital. And not to mention card sleeves featuring these cunning characters and many more including Wolverine, Miss Marvel, Black Panther and Thor and a Unicorn. All other sleeves and mats can be found at your friendly local gaming store at upperdeckstore.com and by following the link in this video's description. Click it now before the internet closes for the night. <laughs> Is Catan getting a new expansion? No. Well, yes, yeah, well, kinda. Previously, Catan Treasures, Dragons and Adventures was only played by the most industrious and crafty Catan connoisseurs as it, up until now, was a print and play group of scenarios for the Seafarers and the Cities and Knights expansions where you were able to add in to your trading and building and backstabbing, double talk and lies. You said you had no sheep. And includes new things like treasures, dragons and adventures, funnily enough. It's available to pre-order now at CatanShop.com and is scheduled to ship in July if you want to grab a physical copy of this long sought after expansion for an expansion. <laughs> Actually, while we're talking about new stuff for immensely popular games, I have a few more for you along those lines. Yokohama is receiving the Roll and Write treatment with Yokohama Roll and Write being announced by Akazu Brand. The original Yokohama, a game I really like, has players bringing the village of Yokohama out of the Meiji era to grow into the Grand Harbour it would eventually become through clever engine and network building. Yokohama Roll and Write is the same theme and feel but in Roll and Write form and will be released later this year in a Japanese edition. But if it follows the path of Yokohama Duel, the two player version of the game released last year, then no doubt a wider English language printing will be down the line as well, hopefully. There's been a new version of Galaxy Trucker announced, the 2007 game by CGE where you build up a spaceship in real time and then wait to see exactly how terribly it gets utterly destroyed by the universe at large for points. This new edition has been described by CGE as being modernised, faster, more accessible and just as fun as ever 
with the English version coming out in the summer. So while any changes to the original are unclear, other than a fresh lick of paint, there seems to be at least some things new and perhaps improved from the original. King of Tokyo is getting a monster box later this year, which is a new big box edition of the, at this point, classic game. I said it. That's my opinion, just like how I think Bigfoot is real, and how he would lovingly rule Tokyo. This new monster box comes with the base game, the power up and Halloween expansions, as well as a new baby gigasaur monster, and a dice tray. So if you want all of King of Tokyo in one place, the new edition has you covered later this year. <laughs> Perhaps the news that excited me personally the most this week, other than there's this horse that goes into intensive care units to meet patients. Has anyone else seen this? Anyone? Nay? Seriously, the horse is called Peo. Anyway, there's been a new coin game announced, you know, in that war game series of games that I love and talk about to anyone who'll listen. And this is volume 14 in the series, The Pure Land. I'll be honest. I'm really excited about all the upcoming coin games. China's War, People Power, Red Dust Rebellion. I'll probably get them all because I'm single and I don't really eat a lot. But the Pure Land, based on the Onin War in Muromachi, Japan in the 1400s, just couldn't be more tailor-made for me. It depicts the devastating civil war in the 15th century that reduced Kyoto to ruins and began many of the events that would eventually lead up to the stuff that happens in this game, Sukihara. It has four scenarios to play, four factions to play them with, and it just looks incredible. So look out for that, perhaps next year. <laughs> On the other side of the coin, we have A Gentle Rain, the new game from Kevin Wilson of co-designing Arkham Horror fame. And A Gentle Rain is meant to provide the exact opposite experience to Arkham Horror. I, mean, I guess the exact opposite experience to Arkham Horror, but I don't know, be yachting, I guess. A Gentle Rain is meant to be a relaxing game, even in times of stress, which sounds good right about now. And you'll be tile laying as you create a lake filled with lily pads as you try to cleverly create each colour of lily before the tiles run out in a race against time. Peaceful. It's out next month and sounds delightful. <laughs> And with more quick fire news items, we have Whirring Witchcraft, which is announced by AEG, where you'll be brewing potions and trying not to get all exploded through clever hand management, resource manipulation and simultaneous play. It looks lovely and smart and is planned to be out in August this year. I may have mentioned that I'm a massive Reiner Knizia fan once or twice, and as a massive Reiner Knizia fan, I was excited to hear that Blue Moon Legends is getting a reprint. Well, according to the Knizia.de team, the game has already been licensed by a new publisher and will be out soon. So, more people will have the chance to play this game. So, Blue Moon Legends will be back. It's just a matter of time. WizKids just announced an August 2021 release date for a new game called Free Radicals, which is a Euro-style game with completely asymmetric factions. Total of 10 in the box, it's full of tile laying and exploration, as well as Mancala mechanism, which is what piqued my interest. There's a preview video of the game on Board Game Geek, and while not based on the 1998 breakout hit, you get what you give by American alt rock band New Radicals. I say radical, that's my thing that I say! It does look pretty interesting. Imperial Steam was announced by Capstone and won the title Train Game That Most Sounds Like a Train Game immediately. It's out in quarter four and in it you'll be first building your factories and filling them with workers so that later they can go out and build your rail network. <laughs> and finally it's the 15th annual Golden Geek Awards right now as voting closes tomorrow on May the 1st. There are 16 categories some of which are new to this year like best zoomable game of the year as in best game to play remotely over video call and the overall game of the year has been replaced with the best light, medium and heavy games of the year categories. Also I mean while you're there my podcast was nominated for best podcast this game is broken. So you know just faxing that out there into the universe. <laughs> However you vote, go and have your voice heard and go over to boardgamegeek.com to do so. And that's it. That's the news. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe and take care. <laughs>